everybody. Finally, another episode of All About Codes. I apologize it's taking this long to get this episode out. I just had a pile of footage to go through, and I wanted to make sure that I did a good job of that and put together the best information possible for y'all in this video. And I think that's what I've done. There's going to be a ton of information, not only on coyotes and what they're doing at this time in their life cycle, which is pup rearing, but there's also going to be a lot of information that you can use and apply to your hunting. A lot of information about coyote hunting, sounds used, setups, etc. So I think y'all will get something out of it. Let's go ahead and jump right to the action. One thing that I do want to mention, as you're watching, watch for the sections in the video titled Note. Those are going to be your tips and information that apply to coyote hunting. So watch for that. And then also at the end of the video, make sure you're, you subscribe to the channel if you hadn't already done so. This is going to be part one of a two, possibly three part series on summertime coyote and their behavior and also coyote hunting. So you don't want to miss any of that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and also make sure you comment on the video. If I left anything out, you want to ask a question, do that, or just give me some feedback. Let me know stuff you want to see in the future. Let me know what you think about the video, all that kind of stuff. I promise I get on there and answer that stuff. But anyway, let's get right to the action, see what we can find out about codes. And as always, I appreciate y'all watching. With winter and breeding season behind them, the warmer weather of spring brings with a change in the coyote's life cycle. This mated pair, heavy with a litter of pups, anxiously awaits their arrival in their freshly established denning area. Once the pups are born, pup rearing will begin and many changes in cow behavior will take place. Note, locating pairs of coyotes marched through May by using locator howls is a great way to find denning and pup rearing areas early before family groups get vocal. These areas will be great for calling all summer long. Lone, pair, and group house sounds from MFK game calls are excellent for locating and calling coyotes year round. Fresh coyote pups less than one week old inside the den. As soon as pups are born, during late March through early May, pup rearing for adult coyote pairs begin. From birth until the pups emerge from the den, the female will spend almost all her time with the pups, only leaving the den for short periods to eat, drink, stretch her legs, or check the surrounding area for danger. During this time, the male is never far away. However, he typically does not enter the den, but will instead spend most of his time patrolling the denning area, protecting it from intruders that get too close, and hunting for himself and the female. By two weeks of age, the pup's eyes and ears have opened, and they're beginning to move around inside the den. Before long, they'll be ready to look outside for the first time. While the female is in the den constantly caring for the pups, the male makes frequent visits, making sure no potential threats are nearby. Protecting the den and pups is serious business for coyotes. They will aggressively attack or kill any animal, including other coyotes and domestic dogs, that get too close. Even animals not used for food will oftentimes be attacked or killed if they wander too close to denning coyotes and their pups.
This uneaten skunk killed by the male is a prime example of denning coyotes extreme territorial aggression during the denning and pup rearing time frame. During other times of the year, animals not seen as prey will usually be ignored and left alone, although it should be mentioned that coyotes will occasionally kill for fun or sport, not eating their victim. Both the male and female, along with any other associate coyote helping to raise the pups, will show an increase in territorial aggression during this time. Due to this increase in aggression, non-prey wildlife and domestic pets are at higher risk of being attacked by coyotes during denning and pup rearing season. Here, the wet female displays vicious denning aggression on this possum, stalking, attacking, and leaving it to die with no intentions of eating it. It was attacked only as a potential threat to her den and pups. At three weeks old, the pups begin to emerge from the den for the first time, playing and exploring near the den opening. Once pups emerge, the female leaves the den and rarely re-enters. She will now care for the pups near the den opening, communicating with fast-paced whimpers. Should danger arise, the pups will dive back into the den for safety, with adults staying outside to defend. Note, whimpers like these are made by both male and female coyotes year-round, although they are often inaccurately referred to as female or breeding sounds. However, there is a spike in whimper and all other coyote vocalizations during more social times of the year, such as breeding and pup rearing. Whimpers are great for calling all coyotes, especially in close range hunting situations. At this age, pups will nurse outside the den and begin eating regurgitated and semi-solid food brought back by both adults and any associate coyotes helping to raise the pups. Semi-solid food from vomit or meat scraps will now be the pup's main source of food, although occasional nursing will continue until the pups reach six to seven weeks old. Feeding their hungry family is now a full-time job for the adults, requiring them to make frequent deliveries to the waiting pups who quickly devour the typically small meals, anxiously awaiting more.
At three to four weeks old, another change takes place as pup play quickly turns into serious fighting for pecking order in the litter. Note, little pup distress and fight sounds such as these are extremely effective at calling cows, quickly bringing the adults in to investigate, especially during denning and pup rearing season. By four weeks old, fighting for dominance amongst all members of the litter is in full swing. Multiple and frequent battles will take place until all members of the litter have rank within the pecking order. These fights are serious and can go on for hours each day until full rank is established. They play an important role in the young pup's life as top ranking pups will get the most and best of everything. This can make the difference in survival, especially in big litters when available food is scarce. Fights usually end in the form of a pin down, with the submissive loser rolling to its back while the victor stands on or straddle of its opponent in a display of dominance. Note, aggressive, vicious pup fights like the one seen here are great for calling cows year round, but most effective during pup rearing especially after the pups are out of the den and spending time alone. Note, by July adults start spending more time away from pups but are still close by. This will continue through September or early fall when family groups bust up. This July through September time frame is my favorite for using pup bites. Once pecking order is established, serious fighting is over. Only occasional scuffles will happen from here on with the dominant pups quickly reminding the others who's boss. Note, to get sounds like the ones heard here, go to MFK Game Call's website. You'll find these sounds and many more. All sounds are recorded from live coyotes naturally interacting in nature. No forced sounds and no sounds from pinned or caged coyotes like in most other libraries. Growing pups now keep all adult members of the family active, forcing them to hunt more often than at any other time of the year. Here, an associate helper female drops off a woodpecker near the den, quickly leaving to hunt for more food. With pecking order now established, top ranking pups will eat first and get their fill, sometimes leaving their lower ranking litter mates hungry.
Small prey like birds, mice, squirrels, and rabbits are a common food source at this time, with larger prey like fawns, coons, and domestic farm animals or pets becoming targets as pups grow. Note, while howls, pup distress, and pup fights are still top sounds for calling summer coyotes, now is a good time to mix some prey sounds into your calling sequence. MFK Game Calls Prey Sounds titled Woodrat, Deer Steak, and Goody Woody Woodpecker are some of our favorites. Save the rabbit sounds for fall and winter. With each passing day, the pups venture farther from the den, exploring more of their surroundings. Now is their most vulnerable time, with less than 50% of pups surviving to adulthood. This female pup and dominant pup within the litter has fallen into a stump hole. Now separated from the group, she whimpers and howls while searching for a way out. Note, these unique lost pup howls and whines are available on the MFK Game Calls website. They are titled Mama Mama Howls and Find Me Whine Howls. They are excellent sounds that have called in many cows for us. Finally, she makes her escape, anxious to reunite with the group. After being separated for hours, once the pups reunite, vicious fights break out with pecking order and dominance immediately reestablished. Although the pups are little, fights like this are brutal and carried out with bad intentions. With teeth like needles, razor sharp, and tremendous jaw strength, some fights can be bloody, though rarely result in serious injury amongst pups. Adult fights are usually short, with one cow submitting before too much damage is done. However, though it's rare, some adult fights can result in serious injury or death, especially if a group of territorial cows gang up on a trespassing loner. No, don't overlook using the extremely aggressive fight sound in your calling sequence, especially at the end of stands when other sounds haven't produced. Oftentimes, these vicious fights will trigger response when nothing else will. MFK's Pound Town Fight, No Cold Bloodbath, Den Vicious, and Table Scraps are some top producers. With one more pin down, the fight's over and rank is restored. Now playing and exploring can continue. All the fighting and playing has the pups wore out. It's time for a nap. Like adults, young pups spend most of their daylight hours sleeping, especially during midday when temperatures are at their highest. First and last light each day are typically when pups are most active. Once pups leave the den, they no longer sleep there. Instead, they bed on top of the ground like the adults. Only using the den or nearby cover as a hiding spot should danger arise. Note, despite what many believe, coats do not use dens year round. Dens are only used by mated pairs during spring denning season for the birth of pups and early pup rearing. A 
adults are now spending less time directly with the pups, but are never far away, checking in often and bedding nearby and downwind of the pup's location. Bedding downwind is a built-in survival instinct of coyotes and many other animals. This strategic bedding allows coyotes to scent check for danger upwind while watching and listening for danger downwind. Note, setting up downwind and as close as possible to known or located family groups is extremely effective for calling summer coyotes. Their heightened aggression during pup rearing will often trigger a quick response. If set up close enough, a few howls and or a little pup distress is usually all it takes. Here the alpha male stops by to check in on his pups, approaching from downwind and scent checking along the way. Not all coyote interaction is serious. In fact, much like domestic dogs, they are very playful, often chasing and wrestling. Here, the alpha female has a little fun with one of her pups. These playful interactions develop strong bonds within the family group and contribute to the coyote's aggressive, protective nature during pup rearing. Five weeks of age, pups are not yet ready to travel far and are still in the denning area. However, they will begin following the adults short distances and expanding their range away from the den site each day. Here, as the mated pair checks in on the pups, this brave little female attempts to follow. She's not yet big enough to keep up and won't make it far before returning to her litter mates and their safe zone near the den. By seven weeks old, pups are fully weaned and no longer nursing. The den site is completely abandoned with pups now using heavy cover for safety and hiding. Pups are also more mobile now and while the adults will continue to be their primary source of food, the pups will begin to forage and scavenge on their own. Insects, berries, trash, or meat scraps from old bones like the pups have here will help supplement the larger meals brought back by the adults. Although the pups are not yet ready to catch and kill prey for themselves, these outings are the first steps for pups learning to hunt on their own. Soon the adults will pick an area for the pups they consider a safe zone within their territory. These safe zones, often referred to as rendezvous areas, will take the place of the den and be where the pups spend their time for the next few weeks. Once rendezvous areas are established, changes will again take place for the coyote and the coyote hunter. We'll cover that in the next episode of All About Coyotes. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.